my dear students parents teachers and principals of all our council affiliated schools across india and abroad welcome to this cisce virtual learning series it is the council's humble gesture and initiative to reach out to our students through our exclusive youtube channel using streamyard we are in the 6 month of the covid-19 pandemic and the crisis does not seem to relent any time soon given that all schools are closed the council has decided to proactively involve its students in some teaching learning activity through this initiative while many schools have been doing excellent work in conducting online classes for its students yet there are some schools which have not been able to do the same for their students the council is concerned about these students especially those at the icsc and isc level therefore the council has arranged for subject experts for all the major subjects at the icsc and isc levels to address students concerns and to suitably guide them in these subjects these lessons can be viewed exclusively on the cisce youtube channel i request all our students to be attentive and participate actively in these interactive live lessons i am confident that our subject experts will be able to assist and motivate each one of you lastly i would like to place on record my most sincere gratitude to mr francis joseph for coordinating with our research division and examination sections to make this possible we plan to continue this series for as long as we can so that the council can reach out to our teaching community in general and to our students in particular thank you and happy learning good morning students good morning to everyone teachers students and those who are watching videos now yesterday in the first session we saw what are natural what is natural frequency what are free vibrations what are damped vibrations we have also seen what are forced vibrations and what are the two cases of forced vibrations so when the frequency does not match with the natural frequency and the frequency matches that is resonance now in today's session we are going to see the different applications of resonance students you need to focus mainly on mechanical resonance more applications which are included in your syllabus are on mechanical resonance so let us start with the first application now sympathetic vibrations of the pendulum now to this flexible string there are five pendulums suspended a b c d if you observe a is the longest c is the shortest and b have b and d having intermediate length but having length same b and d have the same length now when i disturb initially all of them are at rest when i disturb pendulum a once so pendulum a will start oscillating and these vibrations are natural vibrations but because of vibrations of a it will transfer the vibrations to this flexible string and therefore the pendulums b c and d all three of them will start vibrating so natural vibrations of a becomes the force vibrations for b c and d 
now once these vibrations are picked up by b c and d you will observe that all three of them b c and d will slightly vibrate stop vibrate stop actually this this demonstration can be easily set up in the school and in the lab and can be shown to the students so you will find that b oscillates little bit stops even say c oscillates little bit stop d oscillates little bits and stop why because the frequency of a depends on its length we have seen it yesterday with the help of simulation so it does not match with any of them so the uh, free vibrations of a does not assist the vibrations of b c and d continuously and therefore the amplitude is smaller if i repeat i bring all of them to rest and repeat the same thing by displacing c you will observe the same thing because the frequency of c does not match with the frequency of a b or d now you bring all of them to rest and disturb b or d let us say i disturb b now when d is disturbed it is vibrating with the natural vibrations it's it's vibrating freely and it sets the force vibrations for a b and c you will find that a and c vibrate like previous they slightly vibrate stop they slightly vibrate stop but b vibrates gradually increases with amplitude and vibrates with the same amplitude of b why because the natural frequency of b even though d is vibrating with its natural frequency it becomes force vibrations for b so b will start vibrating gradually with the maximum amplitude and you will observe that alternately b and d vibrate with the maximum amplitude they keep on transferring the energy to each other till the energy becomes zero now whatever i have the pendulum a is the longest pendulum c is the shortest pendulum p and d are of the same length when pendulum p or d is set into vibration the vibrations are transferred to the flexible string and it becomes it is never maximum pendulum b and d vibrate with maximum amplitude alternately due to resonance as their lengths are equal their frequency is the same therefore natural frequency of one becomes the force frequency for the other which matches and amplitude increases now i want you to whatever i've said i want you to watch it in the video now before that i am going to keep this file open in case i have to give any explanation in writing now please watch the video now these are the pendulums five pendulums 1 2 3 4 5 of different length but if you see this pendulum and this pendulum are of same length now this pendulum is disturbed all of them have started vibrating but if you observe this started vibrating little bit and it will come to rest stop again it will start vibrating but its amplitude is not prominent at all the same thing here and the same thing over here but if you observe this whose length is nearly same as that of this its amplitude is gradually increasing and gradually it will attain the same amplitude as that of this observe that now this has almost got maximum amplitude now gradually this amplitude is decreasing and this amplitude is increasing alternately they will vibrate with maximum amplitude
amplitude has decreased compared to this now this is vibrating now this will cause force vibrations in this now it is transferring the vibrations to this energy to this now gradually again its amplitude is increasing and this amplitude will decrease if you observe now this amplitude is more compared to this and this will continue alternately till their energy comes to rest zero i hope it is absolutely clear to you what are sympathetic vibrations i am moving on to the next application meanwhile if you see all the other pendulums are slightly that's what i mean that they slightly vibrate stop their amplitude never becomes maximum i think i am moving on to the next application now while crossing a suspension bridge soldiers are allowed to break their steps now suspension bridge is normally over the rivers and between the mountains now the length of the bridge is very large and because of that its frequency of vibration is very less now a marching phenomenon phenomenon has a very small frequency so when they are marching over the bridge the frequency marching is a periodic phenomenon so it may happen that the frequency of their marching match with the natural frequency of the bridge and the bridge can be set into vibrations with greater amplitude and this can cause a bridge to collapse and this has happened this has happened in france i think over the river main the bridge is called as angers bridge and it was collapsed when the soldiers were crossing the bridge i think almost 400 soldiers were crossing around about and more than 200 died when they fell because already there were stormy conditions and the soldiers died uh died now due to the longer length the highlighted points are important if the question is asked these highlighted points are important through the examination point of view due to longer length of the bridge its natural frequency is low thus it may happen that the force frequency of marching may match with the natural frequency of the bridge and due to increased amplitude whenever you talk about any application of resonance it is absolutely necessary for you children to identify which system causes force vibration and it matches with the natural frequency of what because what i come across is that any application may be asked your answer becomes monotonous because the frequency of force vibration matches the natural frequency amplitude increases it doesn't make sense you are not relating to the question which is asked now if the question is asked with respect to the suspension bridge soldiers crossing then you need to make it clear that the marching of the soldiers is causing force vibration and it matches with the natural frequency and the amplitude increases now i am going to show a video not exactly of the same uh, soldiers marching it but there is another bridge which was collapsed because of resonance it was because of air resonance tacoma narrow bridge which happened in us i think in 1940 if i am not mistaken and how that bridge was collapsed i will just show it to you in the video yeah it was the third longest suspension bridge in the world thousands of people attended the ceremonies thousands more worldwide were intrigued by the bridge's extraordinary width to length ratio and its exceptional flexibility But the Tacoma Narrows Bridge had an even more fascinating characteristic: its bounce. Engineers were puzzled by these strange oscillations, 
but they did not doubt the bridge's safety. In fact, the bridge's movement attracted thousands of people who crossed the bridge just for the exhilarating experience of watching the car in front of them disappear. For this, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge was quickly nicknamed Galloping Gertie. Galloping Gertie proved to have many more benefits. It linked the less developed peninsula to the industrial Tacoma area. There was rapid land development and population increase. The bridge also benefited the military, connecting the McCord Airfield and Puget Sound Navy shipyard. All around, the bridge was a marvelous success, but Gertie began to run into problems. The engineers grew more worried about the bounce. Leon Mosef was contacted, but he Leon Mosef was the engineer who designed the bridge. Them that it was not a problem. The engineers hired Professor F. Bert Farkars at the University of Washington to build a scale model of the bridge and test it, while also studying the real bridge. We knew from the night of the day the bridge opened that something was wrong. On that night, the bridge began to gallop. Attempts were made to control the motion by installing hydraulic jacks and tie-down cables, but these proved ineffective. Farkars observed the torsional twisting in the bridge model different from the regular bounce. He recommended adding wind deflection devices and preparations were made to install them, but the bridge did not meet nature's deadline. On the morning of Thursday, November 7, 1940, winds whistled across the narrows. The bridge was rolling two to five feet. Suddenly, the bridge went into a lateral twisting motion. The sides rose and fell 28 feet up and down every five seconds, tilting at a 45 degree angle. Leonard Coatsworth was on the bridge when it began its violent twisting. He got out of his car and fled the bridge. His dog, Tubby, was left in the car. Bart Carson arrived to record the event. The bridge had been closed by officials alarmed by the dangerous motion. Observers were worried, but very few expected what would come next. The first section of concrete from the center span broke off. The bridge began a violent motion. Steel girders twisted. Cables snapped. Lampposts broke off and pieces of concrete fell. Then, two minutes later, a 600-foot portion of the center span plunged into the narrows. And this happened because of resonance, because on that particular day, the wind was blowing at a particular speed. If I'm not mistaken, something 60 miles or something, I, I, I don't rec uh, recollect it, but the frequency of that exactly match the natural frequency of the bridge and therefore due to resonance the bridge started vibrating with maximum amplitude and therefore the bridge collapsed so the reason was resonance actually open. it would actually open. now the next application is when we tune a radio set or a TV channel, we match the natural frequency of the radio or TV channel to the frequency of the station broadcaster because all these are broadcasted on a particular frequency. Now, very often you must be doing it in the car. Suppose the, the stations are, uh, I mean, their setting is uh, uh, damaged. Then in that case, you reset it again. And while setting it, suppose say 93.5 Red FM, you set it to 93.4, you will find that the sound is not clear. But when you exactly set it to 93.5 Red FM, whatever it is, whichever station you are uh, setting, when it exactly matches, you will get the clarity of sound. Even in case of TV, there is a channel scan program. So when you auto scan program start, gradually the channels start getting set. That means every station is a, a, a broadcasted on a particular channel. Why? Because the broadcasted frequency, which is the force frequency, becomes matches with the natural frequency of the TV channel. And then that program or station can be seen clearly. So when the resonance takes place, the amplitude of the signal is maximum. And therefore, you can see it clearly so that is an example of resonance but this is not mechanical resonance sometimes this is very often i have seen that when you ride a bike now especially on the road is free and you're riding the bike with high speed at a particular speed the mirror starts vibrating 
if you are looking into the mirror you cannot see anything behind why because the mirror is vibrating because when it is vibrating at that very instant the frequency of the motion of the block piston inside the engine there is a part called block piston which moves to and fro but through the examination point of view you need not write down this you can just say that the frequency of the engine you need not talk about the frequency of the motion of the block piston but when the frequency of the motion of the block piston or the frequency of the engine matches the natural frequency of the mirror the mirror starts vibrating with greater amplitude and therefore you cannot see the vehicles also coming behind clearly but the solution is simple change the throttle either slightly increase the speed or decrease the speed the vibration stop because by changing the speed you are changing the frequency of the force vibration that is the engine and therefore it does not match with the natural frequency of the mirror so if this example is asked you cannot just say that okay this happens because the frequency of force vibration matches with the natural frequency you have not related to the question so it is absolutely necessary to make it clear that is because the frequency of the engine matches the natural frequency of the mirror therefore mirror starts vibrating with greater amplitude and therefore uh, you cannot see in the rear view mirror and how can it be stopped by slightly changing the speed of the bike now next example is opera singers now opera singers can break handmade wine glass with their voice they sing at a particular pitch normally they keep a straw inside so when they are singing based on the vibration of the straw they come to know whether the frequency is matching or not and when they match their frequency for a long time the they can they can shatter the wine glass because at that time the wine glass starts vibrating with maximum amplitude now i don't have a video of opera singers breaking the glass but i think uh, uh, one of the video was uh, shown that the speakers they could change the frequency of the speaker and the wine glass is kept in front of it and the glass shattered please watch this video by when you are listening to the sound you will come to know they are trying to change the pitch up and down little bit and then they keep it constant and then the glass shatters you can feel the pitch changing so in this case for quite long time the frequency of the sound match with the natural frequency of the glass and therefore the glass shattered when it started vibrating with maximum amplitude that's resonance now the next application is okay before going to this application i would like to show you one demo i am taking away uh pulling down the presentation now i think all of you can see this ruler which i am holding it okay now the length of the i i have clamped this ruler on the edge of a table and i am going to disturb it i am going to disturb it now when i am disturbing i want you to observe these vibrations whether it is vibrating fast or slow so this is the longer length i am disturbing it in once again now in this case the longer length of the ruler is vibrating now i am reducing its length i am clamping it at a and making smaller part of the ruler vibrate now when i disturb this ruler
you will find that now it vibrates faster so the frequency of vibration is inversely proportional to the length the longer the length even we talked about the bridge experiment normally the bridges are huge in size so because of their longer length the frequency is small which you have seen with the help of this uh, demonstration with the ruler now i am going back to the presentation now this is true in the air column also now in the air column the frequency na natural frequency of the air column is inversely proportional to the length of the air column so longer the length shorter is the frequency and shorter is the length of the air column longer is the frequency now if you see this is a tube measuring cylinder basically you can show this experiment in the school also measuring cylinder and inside this you take any hollow pipe maybe made out of plastic metal whichever one is available and you immerse it partially now from the surface of water till the edge of the tube forms the air column and it will have certain natural frequency depending on its length now when i take tuning fork children i hope you know what is a tuning fork okay now this uh, diagram which is shown is a tuning fork which can be hit on a rubber pad or with any other instrument and made to vibrate now this vibrating tuning fork when held over when held over the tube and gradually the tube is moved you will find that at particular length a louder sound of tuning fork is produced why is that so because the vibrations of the tuning fork is causing the force vibration in the air column the particles of the air starts vibrating okay and if their natural frequency matches with the frequency of the tuning fork then the air particles inside will start vibrate with the maximum amplitude now in the later on when you are going to do the characteristics of sound you will learn that when the amplitude is maximum the loudness is also maximum and therefore the louder sound is heard if i move this tuning fork slightly above or slightly below you will not be able to hear that louder sound so hold a tuning fork above a hollow metal cylinder which is partially immersed in water present in a measuring cylinder gradually raise the metal cylinder at a particular length of air column in the hollow metal cylinder a louder sound of the tuning fork is heard if we move the hollow cylinder slightly up or down then we do not hear the sound natural frequency of vibrating air column is inversely proportional to the length of the uh, air column thus at that particular length the force frequency of the tuning fork again in this application i am making it clear which is causing force vibration force frequency of the tuning fork matches the natural frequency of the air column and the air molecules vibrate with maximum amplitude producing louder sound i am not simply saying that because the frequency of force vibration matches with the natural i am identifying which is causing free vibration i mean which is causing force vibration and matches with the natural frequency of water now again in this video you will see the happening same thing happening whatever i have explained this is the hollow tube which is kept now you can hear louder sound now when the tube is raised you don't hear that sound but at that length only you can hear it this is with 512 hertz so the length of the air column is smaller now he's trying with 384 hertz so he has to raise it up and here you hear the louder sound so this happens because of resonance 
this happens because of resonance now let us go to the next example now sonometer now sonometer is a device okay uh, which is a hollow box and on the top of the box there is a fixed support to that support you tie a wire pass it over a pulley which is fixed on the at the edge of the other block uh, other end of the sonometer and there is a pan in which you can place the weights we call it as hanger so to change the tension in the string below the string there are two knife edges kept and there is a length of wire between these two knife edges and a small piece of rectangular paper is folded at the center and kept it at the center of this wire now you take a tuning fork strike its prongs and touch it to the sonometer normally when i have done this experiment it doesn't work properly when i touch the sonometer but it works well if i touch the knife edge okay and by touching the vibrating tuning fork you change the length by moving the other knife edge and at a particular length when the force frequency of the tuning fork matches the natural frequency of the length between the two knife edges the wire will vibrate with the maximum amplitude and the paper rider will fly off if it doesn't match you will find that the paper rider will vibrate but it will not fly off it will fly off only when the frequency matches exactly and i want you to observe this with the help of this video okay this is the explanation again in this explanation i have made it clear the force frequency of the tuning fork matches the natural frequency of the length of the wire and therefore due to resonance whenever you talk about the resonance two points are important force frequency matching the natural frequency identifying which causes force vibration and matches with the natural frequency of what and increase in amplitude many a time students miss out the point of writing increase in amplitude and another common error is that not identifying forced vibrations by whom and uh, natural vibrations of what okay so The setup for this experiment is as shown. While performing this experiment in actual lab, ensure that sonometer is kept on flat table. Stretch the wire by placing suitable load on the hanger. Place the paper rider on the middle of wire ab select the tuning fork of required frequency strike the tuning fork in order to generate the frequency move the wedge slowly to get maximum vibration on string the distance at which when maximum vibe oh sorry when maximum vibration happens is known as resonating length this rider will fall down at resonating length now did you observe that at resonating length the wire was vibrating with maximum amplitude you can you could see wire clearly looking like a loop and that's why the paper rider flies off because the amplitude of vibration is maximum now before going to the assignment i am pulling down the presentation and i am going to show you an interesting demo i have a matchstick okay which i have trained which i have trained them and and they will follow my order now i am placing this matchstick i am holding 
and I am placing another matchstick on the top of that. And I hope all of you can see. Yeah. Now I am just placing the other matchstick on top of that. It is free. Now, when I'm going to give the instruction, the matchstick is going to fly off. Come on, jump, jump. Come on, jump. Oh, one second. Come on, jump. Oh, sorry. I think so. We are just missing a little bit. Uh, Dinkar, so we just yeah. missing. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just missing it. So yeah, now it's better. It's getting stuck to my. One second. It is fine. Are Now, when I hold it without doing anything, the matchstick flies off. It jumps and then it flies off. I think my hands are sticky. It's jumping, but I am not able to transfer that much energy. One second, just give me. It is flying off, but I think you need a bigger uh, rough surface. So yeah, yeah, I think yeah, you can just move it up because it is missing. It is jumping, but actually it should fly off. It should flip. Now, the principle behind it is these two matchsticks are identical. So, the frequency of both of them is the same. Now, when I am holding this matchstick, if you observe, I am holding this matchstick, touching my this finger, nail, and I am slightly brushing my nail. And because of that, I'm transferring the vibrations. Now, if you are able to, my, it happens because the nails are becoming very, they are very smooth. But if you make your nails slightly rough, 
and slightly pull it down then the jerk will be maximum and the mastic just flips off but the skill is that you need to pull it by small amount and the mastic will fly off let me try with other sets of if it works properly then it is good No, I think my nails have become smooth. But you can try this experiment at home. There is a particular way of holding it. So this should touch the matchstick and the other matchstick, you should not hold it. You should leave it free. Okay, so that it just flies off. So when these, when I'm pulling my nails slightly, the matchstick flies off. It worked properly yesterday, but it's not working today somehow. I'm really sorry for that. Uh, but that is an example of resonance. The frequency, whichever matchstick I was brushing, I was passing the force vibration, is match the natural frequency of the other. If you try to do it with matchstick and a pen, it will not happen. Like this matchstick, which was uh, not jumping, the other pen will also, you will find the vibration, but it will not fly off. But the matchstick will fly off. So I think moving back to the presentation, Let's go to the assignment. I think children, you must have have must have had a proper idea of what is resonance. Okay, when the frequency of the force vibration matches the natural frequency of the body, and the body begins to vibrate with greater amplitude. Okay, let us go to the assignment. Please write down these questions. You can draw a rough sketch of this diagram. Observe the diagram which shows four pendulums suspended from a flexible string tied between fixed supports. With respect to the diagram, answer the questions that follow. The first question, name the pendulum with maximum frequency and the pendulum with minimum frequency. Here the word should have been natural. Name the pendulum with maximum natural frequency. When I just say frequency of any body, it by default it means natural. I think you have finished writing down the first question. I'm going to the second. Which pendulum or pendulums will start vibrating if pendulum A is disturbed once? And name the vibrations of pendulum A. Going to the third question. When pendulum D is disturbed once, then all the remaining pendulums start vibrating. Name the vibrations in each of these pendulums. Next one, a vibrating tuning fork is held above a hollow pipe partially immersed in water and gradually raised. It is observed that at a particular length of air column inside the pipe, a louder sound is produced. 
give a reason for this observation. Next question, explain how a wine glass can shatter when an opera singer sings at a particular pitch. I think all of you must have finished writing this assignment questions. Let us move on to the question answer session. Why does the sound produced keep on changing when we tear a sheet of paper? Now, this I would like to show you practically. Now, when I tear the sheet of paper, you will find that the sound changes. Why? Because as I am tearing the paper, continuously the length of the paper keeps on decreasing. And when we change the length, the frequency changes. And therefore, the frequency keeps on changing. Actually, it keeps on increasing. The pitch of the sound keeps on increasing. Why are soldiers allowed to break the marching steps while crossing a suspension bridge? Now, as I told you that when they are crossing a suspension bridge, normally the suspension bridge is very long. So its natural frequency is very small. So it easily matches with the natural frequency of their marching, which become the force vibrations for the bridge. And because of this, the bridge may go into violent vibrations with greater amplitude. And there are more chances of collapse of the bridge and to minimize these chances, they are allowed to break their steps. They are not supposed to march. <clears throat> How are natural vibrations different from damped vibrations? Now, natural vibrations are the free vibrations and their amplitude all the time remains the same. That can happen. Amplitude remains the same. But in damped vibrations, the amplitude keeps on decreasing. The amplitude keeps on decreasing, which does not happen in case of natural vibration. And amplitude decreases because of the frictional resistance of the medium. How are force vibrations different from resonant vibrations? Now, resonant vibrations are actually force vibrations, but if I just talk about the force vibration, then it does not mean that the frequency of the force vibration is matching the natural frequency. But resonant vibration means the frequency of the force vibration matches with the natural frequency and amplitude of vibration is maximum. Why is louder sound produced during acoustic resonance? Now, when acoustic, acoustics is related to the sound, sound resonance when takes place, the amplitude increases and the loudness depends on the amplitude. In fact, you will be learning it later on that the intensity of sound is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude. And since the intensity increases, the loudness increases. And therefore, during acoustic resonance, the uh, louder sound is produced. Does the amplitude remain constant in resonance? 
now amplitude depends upon how much energy is transmitted so if the resonance is happening in vacuum when there is no energy loss then there will be a particular amplitude reach and it will remain the same but otherwise because of the frictional resistance of the medium the amplitude of that will also decrease because there is a loss of energy to the surrounding medium what are factors affecting resonance now factors affecting resonance is the frequency okay the frequency of the force vibration should be same as that of the natural frequency and the two systems should be close enough for the energy transfer now what do i mean for example suppose i give you first example of that uh, string now if that string is 2 km long and i disturb the pendulum one at one end and you expect the pendulum at the other end to vibrate the energy transmitted is not sufficient by the time the energy goes over there it dies out so the energy possessed by the body should be sufficient okay to reach the uh, other vibrating body uh, why can we identify the filling of a bottle when kept under a tap of a running water yeah very interesting very practical uh, example if you place a glass below the tap now continuously the water is falling in it you know the sound is produced due to vibration so the air particles inside the glass or bottle is disturbed and therefore the sound is produced but we have also learned that the frequency of vibration is inversely proportional to the length of the air column so when the bottle is being filled from the surface of water to the edge of the bottle continuously the air column keeps on decreasing so the frequency keeps on increasing so you are able to identify that increasing frequency which we call it as pitch and due to increase in the pitch it enables you to identify the filling of a bottle what is a sonar actually it is irrelevant to the topic which we have done but yes sonar stands for sound so stands for sound n for navigation and ranging when there is a system normally installed on the ships to find out the depth of the sea to find out the uh, shoal of fish or to detect the icebergs so by reflection they can calculate the distance it is very important part of submarines do object vibrate with natural frequency only in vacuum if there is no other frequency uh, in causing the other vibrations every time whether it is uh, the vacuum or they tend to vibrate with the natural frequency when it is disturbed it does not matter whether it is in vacuum or whether it is a medium what will change is the amplitude which does not change in vacuum but in a medium the amplitude can change what are sympathetic vibrations the example which i gave you of the different pendulums which are oscillating transmitting the natural vibrations to the other vibrations and then they alternately vibrate with the maximum amplitude those are called as sympathetic vibrations why are string instruments like guitar provided with a hollow sound box now i strongly believe that it is because of the increase in surface area it is not with respect to the resonance even though the explanation given in the textbook is with respect to resonance i am not fully agreeing with it the uh, the the when you pluck a string the vibrations which are produced are transferred onto the board of guitar and due to greater surface area the amplitude uh, that means the loudness increases you must be observing this with your mobile suppose you are playing a particular song on the mobile and you want to do something you normally keep the mobile on a table the moment you keep the mobile on the table the sound of the uh, sound gradually suddenly increases your ears can find out the increase in the loudness of the song 
so it is because the greater surface area the loudness increases actually it is not part of what we did today what is the name of the bridge which collapsed due to resonance there are so many bridges one is takoma narrow bridge the other one is the angers bridge i think there was another bridge uh, in i am not sure but there is one more bridge in uk also but i think timely they uh, went into the repair of that bridge but it was also showing the same problem what is the difference between natural vibration and free vibration natural vibration and free vibration is the same thing only thing is that natural frequency is different but natural vibration and free vibrations means the same thing when a body is disturbed and it vibrates on its own those are the natural vibrations why identical glasses when filled up to a different extent produce different sounds yes as i told you before that if they are filled to different extent then the length of the air column inside each glass is different so obviously the frequency of the sound is different and therefore the sound differs your ears can identify the difference in the pitch of the sound in the pendulum experiment if it is conducted in a vacuum will both the pendulums with equal lengths vibrate equally without altering the amplitude yes ideally it is same but in vacuum also there is a friction at the point of support so that will cause gradual decrease in the amplitude over a very 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 long time is it possible that the natural vibrations of a body be the force vibrations of another body yes very much because as we have seen the uh, example when we take a tuning fork tuning fork is vibrating naturally but it becomes the force vibrations for the air column even in the pendulum sympathetic vibrations one pendulum is set into oscillation those are its natural vibrations but the other pendulum starts vibrating because those vibration becomes the force vibrations for the others okay the last question name the phenomenon involved when we tune a radio set to a particular station so the phenomenon involved is the resonance the frequency of the radio station matches the natural frequency of the radio set or of the channel of the radio set and thank you students for watching the video thank you to the council for providing this platform for reaching the students thank you it was nice conducting the lesson here thank you